Yeah, the situation in the country at the moment is critical. It's very bad. And the entire health care delivery system has broken down. Uh, we have evidence for this. We see the people going out to Zambia to get health care services. They go to South Africa and other neighboring countries. Uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, the people are the, the best barometer for the state of our health care delivery system. And when they run away to go and deliver in Zambia, in South Africa, uh, to go and get uh, minor procedures uh, in neighboring countries, that shows that our health care delivery system is really in the intensive care unit. It needs very quick and rapid resuscitation, otherwise we're going one way. The problem is really on the issue of leadership and governance within government itself. Uh, and the issue of financing, those, those two should go hand in hand. The government has no political will to finance healthcare delivery properly. They have no political will to, uh, to make sure that funds meant for healthcare go to healthcare. Uh, in other words, I'm talking about issues of corruption eroding uh, the finances of the healthcare uh, ministry. Uh, the second problem in, in finance is they are not allocating enough resources. You find other ministries which I consider less important. And I think everybody agrees generally that healthcare is the most important thing in a person's life. They are not giving even the basic 15%, which was called in the Abuja Declaration, the barest minimum that we must give to the healthcare delivery system. They are not allocating it to government, to, to, to the Minister of Health. Yeah, and without finances, we cannot run a healthcare delivery system. The other thing about financing is we are relying too much on uh, out-of-pocket expenditure. Out-of-pocket expenditure is bad <coughs> because it punishes sick people. Yeah, when people become sick, they should be taken care of by the government without having to pay. Failure to make sure that we have a prepayment system within the country that ensures that people receive free health care at point of access is a failure of leadership and a failure of government. This government has been dithering for a long time about the issue of national health insurance and so forth. It's time that the government came up with a robust, workable a form of national health insurance, a prepayment method that ensures that when people fall sick, they receive free health care at point of access. That is where the government is failing. Run a healthcare delivery system without healthcare workers. The government has not shown any willingness to negotiate with healthcare workers and to meet their requests. They are very legitimate requests for proper remuneration and improvement of conditions of service at work and so forth. They must address the issue of healthcare workers, the kind of equipment we should be having. And patients have to go to India, to South Africa, to get advanced tests, to get advanced treatments, which we can do here in Zimbabwe. If we were able to procure the equipment, uh, to secure the healthcare workers, and make sure that we retain them in post so that they can work. We are training a lot of healthcare workers, but they are leaving. And it doesn't help us to have equipment without the necessary specialists in the department. The people working in the uh, radiotherapy units in Zimbabwe gave a presentation a few days ago and said we do have machines. I remember at the end of uh, the inclusive government uh, a few linear accelerators as an example. We bought, I remember we bought a, a brachytherapy machine at Paranyatwa. Uh, uh, these, these are big pieces of equipment, linear accelerators. Um, we need good stewardship of equipment that is there. I remember four or five years after the inclusive government, there was a report coming from Blawayo uh, that uh, one of the linear accelerators had not yet been installed at Mpilo Hospital. I said, ah, this thing is going to age, you know, before, before working. Uh, again, that was poor stewardship of the things we have. Brand new machine lying outside because the building in which it was supposed to go uh, was not suitable. It was rather too small for the machine. So just breaking walls and improving the infrastructure took them four or five years. I don't know if that has been fixed now. I'm sure it is uh, by the passage of time.
Then the other thing that was pointed out was that uh, what we don't have are people to service the machines. The machines are there and they are fairly new, but they need regular service, just like a car needs regular service. We don't have service contracts, service contracts with the providers of the equipment. So the people who purchased the equipment they overlooked the issue of service contracts. And so new machines will look old if they are not serviced. They will not work. The government must attend to that. Um, so I believe that we have the necessary equipment, but it needs to be serviced regularly. We need the expertise. Our scientists are running out. Our, our physicists uh, are leaving the country. And you cannot run those, uh, those uh, departments without uh, proper, properly trained scientists to service the equipment and to use it. I have no idea of costs. But what should happen is the cost for serving the machines should be built into the, the whole project at inception. So when you buy, uh, you should uh, have uh, an agreement on the costs of servicing the machines. Um, which is one thing which was not done. The cost of buying the machines, I don't know. But what I do know is that there's a lot of help for buying cancer treatment equipment. I'm talking mainly here about radiotherapy equipment. The International Atomic Energy Agency does chip in uh, and it does in fact pay the bulk of the purchase price of most of these you know, pieces of equipment. I know they did that in 2013. Um, and, and, and the government contribution is probably less than 50%. So those are opportunities that we should uh, uh, make use of and make sure that we have the necessary equipment. Uh, our, our cancer uh, treatment facilities, I must admit, are very primitive. Fixing the healthcare delivery system in Zimbabwe is easy. We just need political will. We need commitment and we need the government to give the responsibility to people with the capability of fixing the healthcare delivery system. The government needs to commit itself to a funding mechanism for health and to stop relying on donors for everything. Donors are, are there for a purpose. They are there to jag us up to, you know, to help us during our time of hardship. And when, you know, we should gradually graduate there is no baby who breastfeeds for 10 years, you know. The baby has to breastfeed for one year and six months, two years max. And after that, the baby must eat meat and, and vegetables and so forth. The Zimbabwe government has been breastfeeding now for 20 years. We cannot be donor dependent forever. The government must now come up with a, a universal health coverage plan, well-funded plan. Uh, and it's possible. I've heard some people, even academics, saying it's not possible to have a universal health coverage. Hey, universal health is a progressively realizable goal. You don't realize it in one day. Ghana has done it. Other countries have done it. I, I quote Ghana because it's in Africa. They haven't reached 100% universal health coverage. And there's no single country on earth which will receive, which will reach 100%. Why? Because 100% is not reachable. There will always be people in the country who say, I don't want health care, I'm a postal and so forth. So, but uh, it's a gradually realizable plan. The government of Zimbabwe has not started yet, and, and we urge them to start. And there are white papers available, which were done during the time of the inclusive government, which they could work upon. By now, we should be having a fully fledged universal health coverage plan, fully rolled out and fully aging towards universality, in other words, towards 100%. Um, it's, it's, all we know is that a lot of them have left. How do we know? We know them because we have friends who have left, and we see them leaving even today. So people are leaving the country. Uh, I can't give an, an estimate. We know for a fact that, that the all hospitals are understaffed now, not because we are not training, but because we are not retaining those people we train. And what does it mean for the country, uh, that, that brain drain? What does it mean for the country in the long run, five years from now, 10, 20 years from now? It means we are wasting money. If we are not able to retain the people we train, we are training for other nations. Uh, they benefit. We continue to be in the doldrums. We continue to be uh, the underdogs in, in this whole uh, Department of Health. Um, five, ten years from today, 
it means our healthcare delivery systems will still be in a primitive stage, you know, undeveloped. Uh, we are lagging behind. We are going 10, 20, slowly we are going many, many years behind. Each year we don't put things right, we are going a year backwards. Uh, so in 10 years time we will really be backwards unless we, we put our act together. I think of any special innovation or, or special breakthrough that uh, this so-called Second uh, Republic has done. I cannot think of, things have just been going down. So I cannot think of any special innovation. If we have, if, if the healthcare worker situation is going down and the medicine supply uh, has gone drastically down, there are no medicines in the hospitals, there is nothing. Uh, people are now, uh, we've gone back to the pre-2008 conditions where people have to bring in sutures and bandages and so forth into the hospitals. Uh, cotton, even cotton wool, hospitals don't have uh, antiseptics. You have to bring in your own antiseptics to do a delivery at Kweko Hospital. That is pathetic. Um, the equipment is broken down. Most, most laboratories are not providing a, a, a decent service. They can't even do a dis, a, an ordinary food account. Uh, we see that um, uh, X-ray departments are not then there is no ultrasound. Equipment which used to be there with the human resources to operate it is now lying idle, either because it's broken down or the human resources have left. Um, I was talking to a, to a radiographer right now and, and she was saying, yeah, we have an X-ray machine at our hospital, but we cannot print X-rays. I don't know what that means now, you can't print. It means every doctor when they see a patient in outpatients and order an X-ray, they have to walk to the X-ray department to go and see the X-ray on a screen because it can't be printed and brought to him or her in the outpatient department. That's pathetic. It was not like that five, seven years ago. It is like that now. That is general deterioration uh, of situation.